All right, thank you so much for joining us at AOC for Community Quotes. If I can, have you say and spell your first and last name for us. Etiana Wright, E-T-I-E-N-N-A, W-R-I-G-H-T. Okay, great. Thank you again for being here. Uh, tell me a little bit about where you grew up and what it was like there. Well, I was um, born in Abbeville, Louisiana, so I'm a Vermilion Parish girl, okay. right. um, and I lived there until I was seven, um, and then my mm -hmm. family moved to Texas, and we kind of hopped around the Houston area for a few years, and then we uh, came back to, to Abbeville, and I lived there um, okay. all through middle and high school. Um, mm -hmm. That said, I, we, we moved around a, a fair amount, mm -hmm. and I switched schools a lot. I went okay. to 11 different wow. uh, grade schools in 12 years of grade school. So, <laughs> so I'm a, a connoisseur of public schools. Um, so uh, I think it, it kind of gives me a unique perspective working for an education foundation that I had so many, such a variety of experiences with public schools because I, I was strictly public school from pre-K through 12. So That's um, a lot of schools. It is a lot of schools. Who, who has uh, Right, across two offer. states. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, uh, it gives you um, kind of a, a, like I said, a unique perspective um, on uh, kind of resources that different schools have mm -hmm. in different parishes. I went to a school in Vermilion Parish and Lafayette Parish and a couple of different counties in Texas. So it's just, uh, it's interesting yeah. for sure to see the differences. Oh, in attending so many different schools, uh, even if you attended one school, um, teachers, uh, you know, have one of the hardest jobs, of course, educating the youth at such a, a low paying salary. Um, who were some teachers, whether it's an elementary school or high school or college that influenced your life? And tell me about why they were so impactful to you. Well, my mother was a teacher, um, and she taught me uh, okay. for a couple of years. She was a, my French teacher, and she was my speech and debate coach. Okay. So um, first and foremost, I would say that, that my mom was a huge influence yeah. on me. Um, and, you know, living with a teacher gives you some insight as to what they have to do on the mm -hmm. back end of their jobs. You know, they don't right. just go to school from bell to bell. Uh -huh. it's, it doesn't stop in three. No, it does not And it doesn't all. stop in the summer It doesn't either. stop on Fridays. It <laughs> right. doesn't stop during Christmas break or Thanksgiving mm -hmm. or, you know, and then for someone like my mother who was a speech coach, it's every weekend. Right. You know, they have speech tournaments every weekend. So her Friday nights, all day Saturday, going, taking students to and from tournaments across the country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was a, a very, very hardworking educator who had a huge influence on me. Mm -hmm. um, and she directed me in plays and stuff, and so she, uh, she influenced me in that way as well. But um, I also had uh, several other teachers um, that made huge impacts on my life. My fourth grade teacher, Jo Cat Bruce, she taught me um, in, uh, in Texas, and okay. she was just uh, amazing. You know, she would make bets with us that we couldn't do something, and if we did it, she'd stand on her head. You know, she was just, nice. and she was, you know, probably pushing 60, and she was oh, still wow. doing this. I mean, she wasn't a spring chicken, you know. <laughs> she was, uh, she was a, a very, very special teacher um, yeah. to me. And, um, and then in high school, uh, I had uh, several teachers who impacted me um, mm -hmm. extremely, uh, you know, a huge impact on my life. Um, Debbie Prince, uh, she just retired a couple of years ago, actually. She mm -hmm. uh, taught um, different sciences, but mainly biology at Como High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a terrible student, just from start to finish. I was just a really, really? bad student. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and when I, uh, I just went to Como High for my senior year. And okay. so I, I somehow got put into Biology two Honors, oh, wow. which was a mistake. I shouldn't have been in that class. Um, first of all, a science was optional senior year, so I was definitely not taking one mm -hmm. if it was optional. Right. And furthermore, I was not a stellar student in biology one, so I shouldn't <laughs> have been in biology two honors. honors right. um, and so I, I went and talked to the counselor, and I said that I wanted to, uh, to get out of the class. And she mm -hmm. said, okay, well, you have to have your teacher sign this form mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I brought it to Ms. Prince, and uh, she refused. She told me no. She told me that she could tell that I was a bright young lady and that she thought I would do well in her class if I just tried hard enough. Ah. And I was very upset. Um, but <laughs> so I had to stay in her class. You know, the counselor wouldn't change it unless I had the teacher signature and she refused. So um, I 
uh, was petrified <laughs> and <laughs> was like, well, I've got to maintain a certain GPA or else I'm going to lose my tops. And so I've got, I've got to do well in this class. So I worked really hard and I ended up with an A in oh, the wow. class for the year. So Debbie Prince was right. And if I had had a Debbie Prince much earlier uh -huh. in school, I probably would have um, <laughs> been a much better student if I had had someone that pushed me as much as Debbie Prince gotcha. pushed me, for sure. Gotcha. So, um, so yeah, those are some influences that I had. It sounds like some great ones. Absolutely. After high school, what did you do? Um, well, I, uh, I had always been involved in theater. Mm -hmm. It was um, just always something that I did. And so mm -hmm. I went to college and I became a theater major. And I went to NSU up in Natchitoches okay. and, um, and studied theater there. Great, great. Um, let's go back to um, earlier years. Whenever you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, until, I guess, about sixth or seventh grade, I, I just knew I was going to be a prima ballerina. <laughs> and then I stopped growing and those those girls are usually pretty tall so yeah. I, I had to kind of give up on that plus I honestly was not a very good dancer it was uh. I was a little delusional about it but <laughs> um, but then uh, then I, I started doing more theater and so I thought I could do this yeah and uh, and I still do a lot of theater so do you? oh yeah okay. absolutely absolutely that's so great. Um, so yeah that's I always knew that I would be performing in some in some form or fashion so I, I, you know, as a kid, I thought that I would be doing it professionally, right? Um, but right. then I realized that I really liked being here, right. um, and there's not a whole lot of opportunities to make a living as an actor right. <laughs> in Acadia. <Right. laughs> exactly. You can you can have it be a side gig, but um, right. but but yeah. So so that's those were my uh, my aspirations as a child. Okay. What about hobbies currently? What what do you like to do with your time I do away a, from work? I do a lot of theater. Okay. Um, I uh, I have you know I have three kids, and okay. so I spend a lot of time with with my kids and helping them to pursue their hobbies. But mm -hmm. a, one or two times a year, I, I give myself a show, and so I'm I'm able to, to do some theater, and nice. uh, and I also volunteer a lot with my church, okay. and um, and so uh, so I spend a whole lot of time um, there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, what was your first job and what lessons did that teach you? My first job um, in high school, I was a janitor at a, a couple of banks okay. in New Iberia. Okay. So uh, I would clean banks at night wow. and it taught me that um, you should clean up after yourself. <laughs> yeah. That no one should have to, especially in an office setting, you should wash your coffee cup. Right. It's yours. You, you should do that. So uh, I'm also always very <laughs> conscious about um, my bathroom, ha my bathroom habits in a public facility. Right. You know, I'm always uh, I'm the weirdo who's like wiping up the water on the cab counters oh, in the movie too. theater. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I'm, I'm that person because <laughs> I uh, I just know that there are people that are going to have to come back behind you and clean up that mess. Sure. You know, and yeah. and they're not really there to do that. Right. There is a difference between you know a a, a maid and a, a, a housekeeper. Right. Yes, <laughs> so, exactly. So, yeah. uh, so I'm always very, very conscious about um, That's good. making sure that I uh, yeah. you know, leave a place better than I found right. it. Right, and you'll carry that on through the rest of your <laughs> life. Absolutely. And pass that on to your kids, Absolutely, <laughs> I try. They don't do such a good job at home, but at least in public they behave more Right, well. right. <laughs> so tell me about your career path now and what led you to work for the nonprofit organization that you work for now. Right. Well, um, I got into nonprofit um, by necessity, really. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, 21 mm -hmm. when I um, became pregnant with my daughter, mm -hmm. and I needed a job very badly. Mm -hmm. And my sister at the time uh, was teaching at um, the Acadiana Symphony Orchestra and Conservatory of Music. Mm -hmm. um, she was teaching voice lessons there. She mm -hmm. is a, a choir teacher. And they were looking for a receptionist. And <clears throat> and I was looking for a job, <laughs> and so so I uh, started working for the symphony, and fell in love with nonprofit work. You know, mm -hmm. it was just you got to to be involved very intimately with your community, mm -hmm. and you got to to do stuff for other people, right. and that was really cool for me. Um, it's something that I'm extremely passionate about. Is is you know being involved in my community and and trying to make a difference. So, uh, so that's kind of how I, I became involved in okay. nonprofit, and you know I worked for ASO for four years and moved from a position. Uh, my title was front desk, 
like a piece of furniture. <laughs> and uh, and I, I ended up becoming the development director in the course of, of four wow. years because, you know, I just, I, I jumped in head work, first work to, to that world, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, um, and then I moved on. I worked for Hospice of Acadiana for a little while, okay. and um, and I was looking to uh, education, you know, with my mother having been a teacher and me having school hopped so much. Right. Education was always extremely important to me, and I was starting a family, and um, and I uh, I had always kind of kept LEF. Uh, I'd seen what they were doing, and I had been to teacher awards because my sister was a teacher, and mm -hmm. I just thought that it was a really neat organization, and I... Um, I heard about uh, the programs director position at LEF okay. back in 2012 and I applied and they hired me, thank goodness. And yes. so I've been there ever <laughs> since and I've, I've gone from programs director to executive director now. And so, um, so you know, working in the nonprofit sector is, uh, I left it for a little while and worked mm -hmm. uh, for a financial advisor and um, they were wonderful, fantastic people, but I just knew that that was not the world I wanted to live mm -hmm. in. You know, mm -hmm. uh, nonprofit is really where my heart is and where I feel like I can use my skill set best. Gotcha. Um, and so I, I ventured back into it, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'll always be here That's <laughs> in awesome. the nonprofit sector in some way or another. I hope you are. Me too. Uh, <laughs> tell me more about the Lafayette Education Foundation. What is the mission and what does it do? Right. The mission of the Lafayette Education Foundation is to promote and support excellence in education in Lafayette Parish Schools. Um, we do that in a number of ways, um, developing uh, relationships between the private sector and the public school system, fostering those relationships, helping to um, kind of bridge the gap between what teachers are given to mm -hmm. do their jobs and what they actually need to successfully do their jobs and to, to provide opportunities for their students okay. um, in the, to the best of their abilities. And so, um, we do that through uh, grants to mm -hmm. public school teachers and through mm -hmm. our teacher awards program. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the success stories that um, you've had through the Lafayette Education Foundation, whether it was before you <coughs> joined the team or afterwards. Right, well, uh, when it comes to our teacher awards program, there are two stories that are just my ultimate favorites. Okay. Um, one is uh, a, a number of years ago, uh, Lisa Rainey, she uh, is a, a teacher at Como High. She's mm -hmm. still in the classroom. She's fabulous and wonderful. I would love to clone her and put one Lisa <laughs> Rainey at every single high school across the parish. Um, but she, uh, she teaches um, math and science uh, in mm -hmm. a variety of forms. Um, mm -hmm. And she uh, was a finalist back in I don't know, I guess 2010 or 2011. She was a Teacher Awards top finalist. Okay. And um, with her winnings, because Teacher uh, Awards finalists do get a cash award, nice. she started a robotics club at Como High School. She just reinvested the money that oh, she wow. won right back into the classroom, which happens more often than not with these teachers who yeah. are finalists for Teacher Awards. Um, so that robotics club that she started at that time has, I mean, they have just exploded. They're going on and winning international uh, n robotics competitions and, and tournaments and they're just blowing and going over there and she'll take she she opens it up to kids across the parish you know it, you don't have to go to Como High to participate with their robotics club she'll take mm -hmm. any student who's interested they now run camps over the summer for younger kids they the high school students are like mentors for the the elementary and middle school students so mm -hmm. it's just it's a beautiful program that she's created um, thanks to having some financial resources that she got through teacher awards. Gotcha. So that's one of my uh, one of my favorite stories. Another one is um, the uh, he's now the principal at the STEM Academy, uh, Academy uh, Jeff Debates. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a teacher awards finalist, I think the first year of teacher awards. So this was like 1999. Right. Um, and with his earnings, he uh, started a scholarship fund for the student who had nominated wow. him and this wow. student went on to work for the Department of Education in Washington <laughs> DC you know so it's those things that just kind of snowball right. and it's a, a ripple effect um, with with the the dollars that LEF invests in in the community that can mm -hmm. can really make a, a, a difference um, mm -hmm. and that's just through teacher awards you know we also have our grants programs which you know impacts thousands of, of students um, each year mm -hmm. across the parish. So it's, uh, and those programs are, they run the gamut across mm -hmm. curriculums and, and grade levels and schools. We, we fund STEM programs, we fund 
arts programs, we fund literacy initiatives, mm -hmm. um, math and science programs, you know, any, pretty much anything, uh, we, we're just here to, to help teachers. You know, this year, and it's not always, <clears throat> usually the grants that we fund are for creative and innovative approaches to education in the classroom, but a lot of times it's just basic needs. You know, mm -hmm. we had a, a teacher submit a grant application this year She's a kindergarten teacher at a, uh, a school that doesn't have a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. And she asked for a classroom set of, de of, of chairs oh, wow. because all of her chairs were wobbly. And can you imagine like 26 wobbling yeah, no. five-year-olds? <laughs> no. I would rather not. <laughs> right. And so she, uh, she would rather not as well. So she asked <laughs> LEF for desks. You yeah, know, I mean, that the is the basic. basic of basic needs right, right. that they're asking for, and and you know, we're we're trying to just make um, make a difference in the classroom to where teachers and students can breathe a little bit easier yes. and and have a little bit of an easier time uh, mm -hmm. to where they don't have to stress so much about it, and they can really just get down to the basics right. of education. Right. Well, speaking of stressful, um, your fundraising comes along with working for a nonprofit, and AOC is is in that category as you know raising money. And we participated this year in the South Louisiana Giving Day, and I know that LEF did as well. Um, that's it. It's an event um, put together by the Community Foundation of Acadiana, um, and and I know that that generated some funds for you guys. But where does the majority of your funding come from? Is it from private donors? It's from private donors. The majority of our funding. Um, mm -hmm. For, for our operations okay. uh, comes from, from private donors. And for a lot of our um, special grants programs mm -hmm. and for teacher awards, it all, all mm -hmm. funds for teacher awards comes from private donations and, and grants. Um, right. When it comes to our classroom and school impact grants, mm -hmm. LEF does have an endowment fund and it's with okay. the Community Foundation of Acadia. Nice. Okay. And, um, and so, uh, you know, we get to draw on that endowment based on market performance and how much interest is, is earned. And so we get to, to draw on our endowment. And our classroom and school impact grants are primarily funded through um, funds from our endowment, but we also kind of can boost those numbers with mm -hmm. grant partnerships from people in the community. And that's, right. you know, more private donations that helps us to, mm -hmm. to kind of be able to give out more money than, than we just have on hand. Love it. Love it. Uh, one thing that I know AOC does every year is that we film the Teacher Awards um, event. Uh, I'd like for you to tell us a little bit more about the Teacher Awards and how someone can go about nominating a teacher and tell us more about the time frame and all of that good Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Um, teacher Awards celebrated its 20th anniversary um, this past year and uh, we're extremely proud of that. Um, mm -hmm. It is a, a, a wonderful program and that, unlike our grants programs, Teacher Awards is open to public, private, parochial, and charter schools. So it's any school in Lafayette Parish. And there are a lot of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, just thinking about that, how many teachers there are in these right. schools that are eligible to be nominated. Um, and so uh, teachers eligible are, you know, full-time uh, teachers, not aides or paraprofessionals or anything like that. Okay. So people who have one-on-one -on -one interaction with students in the classroom. So mm -hmm. music teachers, librarians, um, PE teachers, really all of those folks are, are eligible to be okay. nominated for teacher awards. Okay. And that nomination process is September 1st through October 31st of each year. Mm -hmm. um, and we, uh, you could write in a nomination letter or you can do it online We because, you know, it's the 21st century. We yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last year we moved. Just last year yeah. we moved our um, nominations process online, so we have that option available as well. And it's a very, very simple, easy, streamlined Google form okay. that folks can go in and and fill out. Oh yeah, we to love Google their Forms here oh, it's at the AOC. Best. It's I, awesome. I love Google Forms. It's <laughs> such a wonderful resource. So, yes. So yeah, that's uh, teacher awards. And you know, it's funny we have been been kind of cleaning up around our office and going through old files and. In the first couple of years of teacher awards, we see that like they received 200 nominations and 180 teachers were nominated, and it's like, oh, that's so cute because now last year we received almost 1,700 nominations, oh my gosh. nominating wow. over 680 teachers across the parish. So it just goes to show you how much the event is has grown, mm -hmm. and how important it is mm -hmm. for these teachers who right. you know, I mean, they are in the trenches every day. Mm -hmm. And the majority of what you hear about education in the news is not positive. Right. So right. we take great pride in being able to 
have a program that we look at educators and say, we see you. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge what you're doing in the classroom. We appreciate you. Thank you. So it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a gift really for us to be yes. able to do that for them. It is. It's always nice to show gratitude to those that educate our youth. Um, what is your website for people that are watching that would like to get more involved? Sure, absolutely. It's lefoundation.org. Okay. Um, and we've got information there about how folks can uh, get involved in any of our programs, how they might be able to donate, how they could volunteer even, even okay. with LEF. What are some volunteer opportunities that sure. someone can uh, help with? What we primarily look for volunteers for is our pin patrol and finalist patrol events, and that happens in December. So, um, and that's uh, through teacher awards. And mm -hmm. so we get all of our nominations and we, you know, create all these lists and we get all these volunteers. And on one morning in early December, we don't ever give out the date because we want it to be a surprise. Right. Um, we get, you know, 80 to 100 volunteers together. Um, we all meet in one location in the morning, we give out packets and we go, like last year we went to 72 schools between eight and noon and we gave a commemorative pin and ribbon to over 680 educators. Wow. So just in the course of four hours, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is a, it is a well-oiled machine. Yes. So, so, but we need people, you know, mm -hmm. we, we need volunteers to be able to do that. Okay. And it is such a blast. It's a small time commitment, you know, four and a half hours mm -hmm. of your life um, right. to get to go make a whole bunch of other people happy. It's a great thing to it's do. It's the best. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of um, my favorite days of the year. It's like, and it's, it's in December, right? Yeah. So it's leading up to the holidays. So you're right. already feeling a little warm and fuzzy. Yeah. And so then you get to go out and, and do that for other people. It's just, it's, it's the, nice it's the best. It's the best. And then the following week, on yet another undisclosed day, mm -hmm. um, we go out to the uh, classrooms of the 16 finalists. Mm -hmm. And we, for that day, it's like bring your Kleenex because mm -hmm. everyone's going to be crying. It's sure. the best. They we bust into their classroom with the news stations and balloons and noisemakers and banners, and they're just in utter shock because they they absolutely weren't expecting it. So <laughs> it's um it's that is the, those two days is when we we mm -hmm. need the most people on hand right um to to make a to you know just a provide surprise. a very very special yeah. day for educators across our parish. Yeah, that's awesome. Now let's turn the tables to uh, talking about you and, and fun in this aspect. Mm -hmm. If you won the lottery, what would you <coughs> do with the money? Oh, <laughs> it's funny. My husband and I were just talking about that the other day. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have a disabled parent, okay. so I would probably first and foremost find a way to provide in-home care for her so that she wouldn't yeah. have to live in a nursing home. Sure, <laughs> right, right. Um, that yes. would be great. Yeah. And um, and I would probably, I don't know, my, my family and I, uh, we, we like um, quiet mm -hmm. and we like to do things for ourselves, you know, like if I had the time and the capability, I'd grow my own food, you know, I'd probably right. just buy a big old spread for me and my parents and siblings to live on and then I'd probably just try to continue to do some good stuff for other people. Yeah, sounds, sounds like a good plan. Pretty simple. Yes, that's nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Nothing extravagant. That's okay, <laughs> that's okay. Um, if you could spend one day in someone else's shoes, who would it be and why? Probably someone who's won the lottery and gets to just do a <laughs> bunch of good stuff for other people. <laughs> That sounds like yeah. uh, the way to go to me, right. you know, that, that to where life is easy and <laughs> yeah. you don't have to, you know, the, the everyday drudgery is not there and right. you can just focus on doing things you want to do. Mm -hmm. speaking, good. <laughs> speaking of doing things that you want to do, and I know that you work for a nonprofit organization, but are there any other organizations in the community that you are involved with? I think you mentioned that you um, you involved with your church. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other groups that you're involved with as well? For sure. Yeah. I, I, I do spend a lot of time at my church. Um, okay. I'm actually what is the equivalent of the board president at my church this year. Okay. And I go to St. Barnabas Episcopal Church right. on Camellia Boulevard. Um, it is the best place ever. So I try to spend a lot of time there. My kids are there right now at Vacation Bible School, oh, actually. Nice. So, okay, um, gotcha. <laughs> so yeah, I spend a lot of time there. We, we do a whole lot of outreach in the community. Um, our outreach committee at St. Barnabas is just they, they're a group of people that just, they rock my mm. socks, I'm telling you. They're just, they're so <laughs> awesome. They'll, we've got this big, um, 
commercial kitchen at St. V and we, you know, those folks will get together and cook a bunch of food and just go hand it out to people in Parks Sans Souci. You know, like they, they love to do good mm -hmm. stuff for people. We've got a, um, our youth group does a lot of mission work and we've got a, a medical mission that goes to Honduras every year. So it's, it's, a, it's a great place to be. We do a, a lot of good work in our community and beyond. Gotcha. Um, and I also, like I said earlier, I do a, a lot of theater mm -hmm. and um, I mainly do that with the Acadiana Repertory Theater. I'm on the board with Acadiana Rep. Um, my uh, dear, dear, dear old friend Stephen Landry and I kind of got that ball rolling with Acadiana Rep. He's the artistic director and he keeps the ship afloat. I don't know how. He's a <laughs> miracle worker, I tell you. So uh, the interesting thing about Acadiana Rep is we only do new theatrical works. So oh. we work with playwrights from across the country to produce um, developmental production. So playwrights who are kind of trying to mm -hmm. test things out with their plays and see how they look and sound when they're up on their feet so that they can develop them more so that these works can go on to have long and happy and healthy life in the American theater. So awesome. that's what we do with Acadiana Rep. Sounds, sounds like you're a busy lady. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could have dinner with a few different people, uh, living or deceased, celebrity or non-famous, uh, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I would probably have to say uh, a couple of the founding fathers, mm -hmm. just so that I could get some clarification. <laughs> yeah. On a few things, sure. you know, everyone kind of I think puts words in their mouths a lot of time. Yeah, and I'd like to to really get down to the nitty gritty. What right. did you mean? Yeah, because here? television wasn't invented then, so <laughs> no. we don't have anything on record. Right, right. exactly. Right. Just letters and things like that, that. were written by other people. Right, a lot of people try to read between the lines, but I would like to hear it from from them how yeah. it, how it goes to kind of get some debates settled right. about a few things. Um, and probably another per probably my grandparents. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would I would like to if I could pick anyone living or dead, I'd probably, you there know, you like to have dinner with my grandparents. Sure. And and probably, you know, my mentor Beth Gilbo who passed away. Okay. Gotcha. Um, one last question. We're halfway through the year. What are you looking forward to for the rest of 2018? Oh, wow. Um, well, LEF has a, a fundraiser um, in the fall of every year. Mm -hmm. It's called You Got Schooled. Okay. It's based off of um, a TV show. Uh, in, it's a competition in mm -hmm. which elementary school students help adults answer trivia questions. Okay. And it is fun because we get to make grown people look silly <laughs> in front of a, a live audience. Nice. <laughs> so, um, so that's a whole lot of fun. And it's, um, it's a, uh, you know, we, we look for elementary school students in the parish and they have to submit little videos um, to telling us why they feel like they should be selected to participate. And we choose four of them and then four adult participants and they kind of team up to answer trivia questions. So that's an event. We, we had our first uh, annual You Got Schooled last year and so this will be our second time doing it. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Gotcha. Um, additionally, LEF, we're, we're kind of in a um, in an interesting place this year. You know, mm -hmm. we, uh, we had a, an annual fundraiser for 10 years called Reprom. Okay. And it was a prom for adults and it was a whole lot of fun, um, but we've, we've put it to bed. Okay. And so we're kind of revamping the way that we, um, we fundraise and we educate the community about what we do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how our kind of shift in, in our structure pans out over the course of the year. Gotcha. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? 10 years from now, well, I'm a, I'm a big picture viewer. Mm -hmm. So 10 years from now, I would like to see, you know, I talk to a lot of people in, in outlying parishes um, about uh, LEF mm -hmm. and they say, well, I wish we had that. Yeah. I wish we had that in Vermilion Parish. I wish we had that in St. Landry. I wish we had that in Iberia. I wish that too. I would, I would really love, to, to say that there's an education foundation in all of the, you know, kind of nine parish region mm -hmm. of, of Acadiana to, to again help um, bridge the gap for those teachers and, yeah. and, and help to give them the resources that they really need. Um, because, you know, we are such a close region. We are. I feel like, like Lafayette, um, it's really great that we have an education foundation here in Lafayette because LEF just focuses on Lafayette Parish. Mm -hmm. But there are some really dire needs in, in the outlying parishes. And if we can just 
kind of shine a spotlight on what those needs are, mm -hmm. maybe some folks in the community would, would help step up to, to address some of those needs and, and help to meet them. And so 10 years from now, I would love to see, you know, an umbrella organization that kind of helps to facilitate education foundations in the surrounding parishes so that, yeah. so that there's, you know, kind of a support system in place for educators across the region. Well, that sounds like a great goal. Well, that concludes our interview. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for Not having me. Not a problem.